This is the Amazing Education Podcast. Powered by the Ames Community School District, I'm your host, Eric Smith. On today's episode, we are joined by elementary principal Jessica Sharp. We're going to have an amazing conversation about positive behavioral interventions and supports, including how it is implemented and how it can positively impact building culture. Jessica Sharp, welcome to this episode of the Amazing Education Podcast. How are you doing? I am doing well, and you? Good. So you are principal at one of our um, elementary schools, Edwards Elementary, and we're going to talk about positive behavioral interventions and supports. That's kind of like that's a lot of words mm-hmm. here, um, but the acronym PBIS, so that's something that people may be familiar with. And so we're going to talk about PBIS. You are at Edwards. Um, you lead a PBIS school. And so we want to just kind of talk through what it is, what that looks like, maybe um, you know, peel back the curtain a little bit to educate our audience on like all of the work that goes into implementation as well. Perfect. So what is PBIS? I mean, that's always like the easy question for me to ask, but isn't always like the easiest question to answer. No. And technically, technically PBIS is a evidence-based three-tiered framework um, that really focuses on practices and systems and data to improve outcome for our students. Okay. Um, that's technical speaking. Um, <laughs> for, for us other folks, PBIS is just really an opportunity um, for um, schools to be intentional about our work um, and provide a, a predictable and positive atmosphere for, for our students and our staff and our community that comes into our buildings. Yeah. I mean, it does take a lot of work to implement. And I I really liked how you talked about it as a framework because there's a lot of different approaches that could go into being a PBIS school. But Mm -hmm. but one of the things that in order to be a PBIS school, you have to be intentional about the work that you're doing. Um, So but so correct me if I'm wrong, though, there's not like this, um, like, set of, hey, do this first and then do this next. It's not like just this very simple book of how to implement it it's it's a framework and and they give you you know there's ideas on how we can do this but ultimately it can also be customized to a specific building and um how the staff implement it as as well is that correct absolutely um one thing that i think we have to always remember is pbis it's not a curriculum Um, It's not a one-day training that that somebody can go to or a team can go to and then immediately they um, are just proficient. You know, they can put on that PBIS proficient badge. Uh, It's definitely a a lifelong journey of of learning about it Um, and and everything evolves. And so what PBIS does is it allows that framework, it allows those tiered um, levels of support that gives staff and, and educators guidance on how to best support our students. Um, so our students can come into the classroom environment um, and be successful, not only social and emotionally, but academically. So this is, you know, literally my job is to celebrate the good work that we're doing. So I'm going to I'm going to give a shout out to your building and your team. A year ago, you were recognized by our Heartland AEA and the Iowa Department of Education for your implement, implementation of PBIS. And I've actually heard other people say this, you know, there are um buildings that you know that can say oh you know we're a pbis school but there's a difference between like saying you're a pbis school and like actually doing pbis work and and you and your team at edwards you're actually doing the work so this is what year three yep okay Mm -hmm. so talk to me about what implementation sort of looks like um not only maybe in year one year one i'd imagine it's a really heavy lift and then, but then as we go into this year, as you said, it's ongoing. So what does implementation continue to look like in your building? Like what types of conversations are you having um, with your staff leading up to the school year? So that initial um, 
training around PBIS when we've decided this is, you know, we've done the research and PBIS is something that, that our building needs or our district needs. We're going to engage in some pretty heavy, heavy training and reflection on our current practices um, and looking at that, at, at our data to determine what is working and what's not working. Um, and, 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 and we did that, Edwards did that, Ames did that as a district year one. Mm -hmm. um, and so then we implemented um, what we had learned into the building. And we started with just that initial um, consistent language and vocabulary. So we looked at our expectations and we identified what does it look like to be safe, thoughtful, and responsible um, within the four walls of Edwards Elementary. Mm -hmm. um, and as we, we worked through that, we were able to identify um, those expectations, and then that teaching piece is, a, is large also. Um, but the ongoing training is, is really reflecting on what, what we're doing and how is it working. So we're looking at data consistently, um, especially now in year three, we've, we've, we've built the platform, right? So we're, we're not looking so much at, at the implementation piece at the tier one level. We're looking at here's our practices, here's our data, um, and what are we doing right? And what do we need to still tweak? Yeah. Uh, and we are, we're also getting more detailed into the specifics of the framework. And so we're looking at our classroom management. We're looking at strategies that we're utilizing. And is it, is it benefiting all of our students or just some of our students? And okay. if it's just benefiting some of our students, then we've got a little bit more work to do. So as a, as a guest who would walk into your building, I just want to point out and then you can... Um, continue on with it. One of the things that I know that you did is, and because you said it, is you've identified what does it look like to be safe, thoughtful, and responsible. And so one of the ways in which you can communicate that is through signage throughout your building. Yeah. So to be those things in a classroom means this. And I would imagine that your classroom teachers are, you know, continuing to reference, you know, the posters or, or the language within those posters and, and reinforcing those in the classroom. But it also applies to the hallway. It, it applies to the playground. It applies to the cafeteria. And those can look different. Like what it looks like to be safe, thoughtful, and responsible in the classroom can be different than what that looks like in the cafeteria because yes. those are two different time periods and settings and the expectations can be slightly different for students. Yep. And we have even arrival and dismissal. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so part of that, that learning that we, we took on as adults um, is that we needed to adjust our traditional practices of teaching. Mm -hmm. um, and so just like with um, academics, um, and, and reading or math, for example, we teach specific strategies to our students to improve their, their reading, to improve their math yeah. skills. Um, and so we're intentional about that with behavior also. Um, so those, the, the consistent language that you see throughout the building, you're also hearing that, mm -hmm. and you're also um, seeing feedback um, from adults with an acknowledgement system. Yeah. Um, so you'll see the signs, you'll, you'll hear the wording, um, but you'll also see specific feedback provided to our students. Mm -hmm. um, we, Edwards, chose to do that in a form of a ticket system, um, but it always accompanies that specific feedback. So okay. when we say kids being, see kids being safe or thoughtful at arrival or at dismissal or in the classroom at the lunch, um, we're providing them with that, that ticket and then that specific acknowledgement. I just, I really like um, the idea of setting up a structure and and both students and staff understand, you know, like what is the expectation here? Um, it's really a disservice to our students to, you know, constantly, you know, like discipline them when there's been no teaching around, like, what is the expectation mm -hmm. here? What is the expectation in the hallway, in the cafeteria? arrival dismissal in the classroom and so talk to me like if, if I'm if you're a teacher if I'm a teacher what does that ticket system look like like in the classroom for example mm -hmm. or in the hallway or in your building I guess generally speaking mm -hmm. so we have a different layers and that is part of the framework that you learn throughout PBIS um, is we have different layers of that acknowledgement system so we have individual um, acknowledgements, we have classroom level acknowledgements, and then we have building level acknowledgements. Yeah. So if um, 
you are a staff member, and we're using the language teacher here, mm -hmm. but PBIS really is a, like all hands on deck. Yeah. Um, so all staff members have um, a understanding of our PBIS system, yeah. and they're part of the team. I love it. Um, and so everybody is looking um, for for students that are being safe, thoughtful, and responsible. Um, and they're also reteaching. They're finding moments that we can reteach. Um, but if we go back to that, to talk about that ticket system, um, you may see a, a kid, um, well, here's an, ex an example. We've got yeah. kindergartners, and they've got, we've got wonderful technology in our buildings, <laughs> yep, right? Yep. Um, but our, our kindergartners are, are just so itty-bitty, and, and so one of their expectations in technology, because we also are safe, thoughtful, and responsible with technology, yeah. Um, is to carry when they're transitioning in the hallway is to carry their Chromebooks with two hands. Okay. Um, yeah. And so they're holding on to that Chromebook. And so if I'm in the hallway and I see that, then I'm able to provide that student with the specific feedback. Thank you for being responsible with your technology. I see that you're holding it with two yeah. hands um, and then provide that student with a ticket. Um, so that would be an example of the individual level at the classroom level. Um, if I see, and using that same example, if I see mm -hmm. an entire class using two hands holding their Chromebook, then I can acknowledge that entire class with a classroom ticket. Yeah. Um, and then we've got a whole system built in with that yeah. um, on, on the classroom tickets. Um, and then as a, as a building, we have um, a system to, to celebrate when as a building we've met our goal. Yeah. Um, and those are our, those are fun times. You know, I know it's um, embedded in the wording of PBIS, um, but I think, you know, there are some myths around maybe what PBIS is. And, yeah. you know, we can talk a little bit, I think, about how this relates to, to school discipline, but I'll just kind of reiterate what I heard you saying. You know, it's positive behavior interventions and supports. And so you've recognized, you know, in your example, all the positive things that our students are doing. Okay. It had nothing to do necessarily with discipline. Um, it's just recognizing and reinforcing all of that positive, great stuff that our students are doing. And so how does this system then positively impact what what student discipline and, and you know classroom management in in our building how, how does that impact all of that um i kind of i personally see it as as a domino effect um so when we have students coming into our building and they know what's expected of them um, and we reinforce that expectation and we reteach those expectations um, our, our school discipline numbers lower. Yeah. Um, and our teachers' classroom management skills increase. Yeah. Um, so overall, um, that allows for, for just an overall more positive environment. It doesn't mean that we don't have to discipline. It doesn't mean <laughs> that there aren't consequences. Yep. It doesn't mean that a teacher uh, might have to stop instruction to, um, to address an, an inappropriate inappropriate behavior yeah. um, but at the end of the day we are focused on the positive yeah. we are focused on celebrating the great things that that happen in in our building every day yeah. so um, as one of the sort of reteaching for our staff or just to rebring back up conversations around what PBIS looks like you know we did put a one sheet together and we specifically talked about um, the myths around PBAS, and we kind of debunked one right there in that it doesn't it doesn't mean that I mean the school year's long. You yes. know, we have <laughs> hundreds of elementary students in mm -hmm. in in your building. So there's going to be a time where you know there's going to be some consequences to some behaviors. I mean that's that's inevitable. We have a big school. You know, yeah. that's the way it is. And so this doesn't mean that that's not going to happen. And I just really appreciate um, you identifying that. You know, the other myth that I think people have is, you know, it's just, well, it's just, and this is simplifying it, but it's just, you know, it's just handing out rewards. And, but it's much more than that. It's, it's really like a, a building and system-wide approach to um, just reinforcing and creating a predictable environment for our students and, and acknowledging the good stuff that students are doing. I mean, I think oftentimes, 
you know, it is very easy to focus on, you know, maybe there's one student who is, you know, acting out a certain way, but we do have, you know, a bunch of other students who are really making concerted efforts to be, as you said, safe, thoughtful, and responsible. Mm -hmm. I hear a lot, um, not a lot, I, not a lot, but I hear sometimes um, that PBIS is just bribing students. Yeah. Um, and I believe that, that a bribe is when you have an inappropriate behavior and you're, um, you're, you are giving something in return for the student to stop that behavior. Sure. Um, to me, that that's a bribe. Yep. Um, so you're on the backside of the behavior already when you're bribing. A reward is is on that front side of the behavior, and it's when you're acknowledging students for meeting those expectations. Yep. Um, and I think as adults, we sometimes forget that that we're rewarded yeah. also. Yeah. Um, every day that we come to work and we do what we need to do, we get a paycheck yeah. at the end of the month, <laughs> right? Right, right, yeah. Um, and there's also um, various just awards that people get yep. for being successful at what they do. Yeah. Um, so rewards yeah. are everywhere in our society, and and I guess in my eyes, PBIS allows us yeah. to to really see the good in what our students are doing every day. And those are fueling things. Like as adults, absolutely, like, they fuel you. Yes. Like they, you want to continue to do whatever your job is. You want to continue to do it well. Yeah. So I mean, I've said this on this podcast many times. You know, I have twins. They're in third grade and. This stuff works. Yeah. I mean, like, it, it really does. I mean, for a student, you know, one of my kids, as you know, I put on my parent hat, to, they come home and they said, oh, you know, I got this acknowledgement today. You know, insert whatever it is. Maybe yeah. it's tickets, maybe it's not. You know, but I, I was acknowledged for this work. That sticks with them. Yeah. And... Yeah. I just appreciate the the building wide approach because you know we're just we're just talking about Edwards Elementary here, but the building wide approach to fuel those students in this way. Mm -hmm. And it is a building wide approach, and I know <laughs> yeah. I, I I touched base on this earlier, but there's not one leader or one staff that can implement PBIS, no matter yeah. how much they believe in it, or no matter you know how much of a love they have for that. Yeah. It's Everybody has to be on deck, yeah. and everybody has to be using the language and reteaching and acknowledging um, for PBIS to change the outcomes of our yeah. students. So how often does PBIS come up in um, professional development, you know, all staff conversations, not even training so much? Because, yes, for you know, this episode we're talking about PBIS, but as you know, the building leader, you're also you know thinking about reading curriculum. You have mm -hmm. special education things that you have to consider as far as training, and and the list can go on and on. I mean, you could just <laughs> add to that list. I mean, I just really touched on the the first couple that came to mind. So this isn't the only thing that is going on in your buildings. But how often does this come up? So. Edwards is in a unique, um, or I guess we, we have an opportunity. I don't know if it's so unique. It's maybe more new, unique for Ames. Um, but we've been able to um, start implementing Tier 2 practices. So as I talked about at the beginning mm -hmm. of our conversation, PBIS is three-tiered. So you have Tier 1, um, which is for all of our students. Yeah. Um, so the, the teaching, the acknowledgement, um, all of our, our babies receive that. And then at Tier 2... Um, is where we really start to target um, more of specifics for students. And okay. so we're looking um, at some check-in and check-outs for students. We're looking at SAGE groups for students. Um, and we monitor that and provide more feedback um, through um, progress reports. Yeah. And then our Tier 3 is very intensive, and we're, yeah. we're really digging in there. Um, but because of the opportunity that, that Edwards has in implementing that Tier 2 um, piece this year, our conversations are a lot more um, 
isolated around around PBIS um, because the tier two is new. Yeah. Uh, but after you get that working, the conversation's really embedded into into everything. So instead of just talking about special education or instead of just talking about curricular stuff or social emotional, the the framework of PBIS really allows that conversation to be embedded um, into everything that we do. So we're not running. Um, programs or initiatives or um, uh, systems parallel to each other. Yeah. Um, rather, it's all our ores are going the same direction. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate that breakdown. Um, you know, and I alluded to all of the, you know, list of other things that are going on in the building, but this approach really does mirror other models. I mean, reading instruction is done the same way. You, you know, you have tier one reading instruction. Yep. And that's going to hit a lot of students um, and give them, yeah, eight, yep. okay. <laughs> and it's going to give them what they need. Mm -hmm. and, and it's going to continue, their learning's going to continue. But that doesn't hit all, all students. No. Nope. Um, and so that's where that tier two and tier three um, come into place, not only in reading, but obviously here in, in PBIS yep. as, as well. Talk to me about um, data conversations that, that you have at the building related to PBIS. Mm -hmm. So um, we have a specific team um, around for PBIS that's looking at, at da data um, on a weekly basis, whether that is at the tier one level or at the tier two level. Um, so we're specifically looking at um, ODR, which is our office disciplinary referrals. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're looking at uh, the percentage of referrals that we have on um, a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. And then we really put together an action plan based on that. And we're breaking, we're breaking that data down to looking at time, location, um, day of the week. And then we can even break it down further to look at what students are receiving a referral. We yeah. can look at demographics. We can look at um, SES. Uh, so that then allows us to be intentional about our action plan yeah. and make sure that we're targeting um, the right area um, to provide that reteaching. Uh, and another really interesting piece I, I find about looking at that data is, is sometimes it's not... Um, changing student behavior. Yeah. Sometimes we have to look in the mirror and change adult <laughs> behavior. Talk to me about that mm -hmm. a little bit. I mean, so I think um, this is why I'm glad we videotaped these episodes, to be honest with you, because I think you saw in my face as you were <laughs> outlining all of that, my mind was blown here a little bit. I mean, because y you said a couple things that I just want to highlight so that they don't get missed. Um, you and please correct me though if I'm, if I'm wrong, <laughs> but you said looking at data on a weekly basis, mm -hmm. and it's not just looking at students, although that's part of it, yeah. it's, it's breaking down um, student demographics, but also like location yeah. of, of where this, so if you've identified like a, I don't know, like a, a hot location, like what, what happens then? Mm -hmm. What do you do? So um, to give another specific example, um, probably two weeks ago, we identified that um, we had a specific grade level yeah. that was um, really having difficulty at recess. Okay. Um, and we knew that. We yeah. had that feeling, yeah. right? You had that, yeah. that feeling. Yeah. Um, but when we look at the data, it backed that up. And so we were able to even identify the specific recess based on the time that the referrals are entered. Or okay. the time, not the time referrals are entered, but the time of the incidents yeah. that are happening. Yeah. Um, so our, our PBIS team then put together, based on that information, put together an action plan. And we were able to partner with the high school um, and bring in some of our uh, our high school students yeah. to come in and reteach recess behavior to our second grade students. Um, without having that data breakdown, yeah. we would just see that we have a, a problem, you know, yeah. or, or we have maybe an area that we need to improve upon. Yeah. Um, but then we were, by breaking it down, we were able to be very specific um, and provide that um, reteaching yeah. exactly where it needed to go. And that's what provides those outcomes. That's what provides the change in culture okay. um, and the change in behavior yeah. um, at a building. So what did, um, do you have an example of like, you know, looking in the mirror? <laughs> I mean, because that is part of it. It's not just all students. I mean, this no. isn't like students have to change their behavior. This, I mean... 
the thing that I do appreciate about a really um, cohesive building is that everyone is in it to make a win. Yep. And it doesn't just mean it's changing student behavior. Sometimes it is. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. but, and that's not, um, I'm a right, you're wrong no. situation in any way because everyone wants students to learn. Everyone wants to have an engaging learning environment and... And adults want a climate and culture that they can come to yes. and they enjoy. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, are those tough conversations sometimes, though? Yeah, I, I mean, mean, they can. I yeah. mean, nobody, nobody, including children, um, like to um, be reminded of what they can do better, yep. right? Yep, yep. Um, and I think traditionally, we as educators have, have, have grown up in a system um, that adults are always right, yep. and you always do what adults say, and, yeah. and and whatnot. And don't get me wrong, I I think that's important. Sure. Um, yeah. But at at the same time, our society is changing. Yeah. Um, and so that the traditional thought or mindset that every kid is going to do the right thing a hundred percent of the time is just not accurate. Um, nope. Ross Green wrote a, an article, and it was titled. Um, Kids would if they could. Okay. Um, and so I think it that that self or that change in in, in mindset is not every student can, mm-hmm. um, and not every student's going to respond yeah. the way that we need them to. Yeah. Um, so those moments that we realize that we need to change yeah. could be as simple as um, a student running in the hallway and us bellowing out, stop running. Yeah. Um, instead of we need to change our language to I need you to be safe and yeah. I know that you're safe when you're using walking yeah. feet in the hallway. Yep. So those that's an example of, of pulling that mirror out. Yep. Um, and instead of screaming, stop running, and the kid continuing to run, and then yeah. you get in that power struggle, yep. Yep. you're able to come in with a positive tone, positive language mm-hmm. um, that's consistent with our PBIS language wow. and and actually have a conversation, yeah. um, and that child uh, is approaching it with open ears. Here's the thing that I've learned. So, you know, in a prior career, um, I was involved, you know, in a school, but, you know, it had some, at times, like intense behavioral moments, and I very quickly, but part of the, like, the, the culture there was to, you know, talk through situations as adults and provide feedback to each other, and receiving feedback is not easy, um, and I learned that very quickly, but the more you do it, the more it, it becomes easier, but also the trust level between staff members goes up significantly because you know, like, you know that each other, everyone wants what's best for for the building and for the students. And as adults, we're not going to handle every situation perfectly either. I mean, I I say that as, you know, from my desk here, I I know that you say it, I say it as a parental hat. I mean, I, I, I have third graders now. I just, a personal parental growth area of me is to sort of throttle it down at times. And so um, I, I just, this this week, I do apologize to, yeah. to one of my kids because I'm like, yep, I didn't listen to you very well. I, I wasn't hearing what you were saying. And that's not easy to say, but no. but it was true. I mean, yeah. that, that's yeah. what happened. So, right. um, so that's, this is, yeah. wow, wow. And I think you, you, you kind of nailed it with, there with the the trust. Yeah. Um, and that coming into Edwards, um, that trust level is huge there. Yeah. It's a family. Yeah. Um, and and not just with the staff but the community and it's mm-hmm. a unit. Um, so the implementation of PBIS went rather smooth. Yeah. Um, because there's. There's not the fear level of I gotchas or mm-hmm. you're wrong. Yep. Um, it really is a trusting environment where everybody knows that we can grow together. Yeah. And it doesn't matter your age, your role, your position. Um, we're we're going to have to support each other yeah. and, and, and be kind and empathetic in our communication 
Um, but we have to hold each other accountable. Yep. If we want an environment where we are running out of our cars to get to our classroom and where kids are, are begging to not go on summer break. Yeah, even yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's inevitable, it but but, but you know, but maybe a little yeah, bit. We can uh, all, we can still wish for it, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, Jessica, we did it. I want to thank you so much for being on this episode. Um, I really, I I learned act, honestly a ton from this episode. So I want to personally thank you for coming on. But I also want to give um, just a huge shout out to to you and your team for continuing to do this work. I hope that our parents and our community finds understanding what PBIS is valuable and that, you know, it's a heavy lift by, by a building, but it is certainly worth it. So um, again, I want to say thank you. Well, thanks for having me.